Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to uh, talk about salt dough clay. And uh, most of you have made it uh, at one time or another, uh, but there's several recipes on Pinterest, and all of them call for just regular all purpose flour, salt, and water. Uh, but but most of the recipes aren't the same. So I wanted to see which one works best. So the first recipe calls for two cups of all-purpose flour. And I'm sifting the flour and salt just to make it even smoother. But uh, it calls for two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and... Uh, one cup of water so that's the one we're going to try first and i'm using room temperature water now this is the one that i've made before now there is one uh, on pinterest that calls for two cups of salt but i just feel like i didn't even try that because i feel like that makes the dough just way too gritty and um so i add the the water and if you need just a tiny bit more just add it maybe a teaspoon or even uh, maybe a little more maybe a tablespoon at a time until you get the thickness that you want so um, this is a messy job uh, I could use a spoon here but I just feel like when you're doing this with your hands you can feel more what the dough needs so um, I just mix this until I get it all stuck together. If it's too crumbly, just add some more water. And you just want to work it together until it stays well together in a big clump. Now, um, if you use air dry clay, it's going to be a little smoother than this clay. And, um, and if you need it a little smoother again just add a little more water and just keep kneading it because uh, the the more you need it uh, the smoother it's going to be so this is a real workout especially when you're doing uh, several batches so today i'm going to be doing several batches and i just thought it would be a good time to try these different recipes out because um, i do salt dough ornaments for christmas and um and my friend gina loaned me her new um clay mold from iod called ginger and spice and it has the most adorable little gingerbread men and gingerbread women in two different sizes so um that's all that i'm going to be making out of this i'm just going to keep making those and keep making them because she uh, was going to be picking it up this weekend, and I wanted to make sure I got it used before then, but now she's going to wait till next week. So either way, I needed to get these done, uh, but after using this one, I think I'm going to order that mold. I think it's definitely worth having. So once I got that one finished, I'm going to go ahead and label how I made this so that I know which one which ones I like more and I'll even make some little notes on what I do or don't like about it. So this one is two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and one cup of room temperature water. Now this next one is two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and one cup of boiling water. So this one, I was very curious about how this would work, but I got it boiling, and then uh, I'm just going to mix it the same way. And if you need them more, again, just add a little more water. Uh, you would think that you wouldn't be able to handle this dough, but once it mixes with the flour, it cools it down enough to where you can handle it. But I first wanted to start stirring it with this spoon to make sure that it, it would be okay to handle but I just mix it up the same way and then uh, I put this one in a bag and labeled it 
And here I am adding just a little bit more of the water because uh, it seemed like it was a little bit drier than the other one. And any time that you add some water, make sure that you work that water into the whole dough uh, by kneading it several times so that your dough is more even. Again, I labeled this one with the boiling water instead. And this next dough was one that, this year's the first I've seen this one actually, four cups of flour, one cup of salt, so a lot more flour than salt, and then, um, and then just a cup and a half, around a cup and a half of room temperature water. And I just kind of added that a little at a time until I got the consistency that I wanted. I was leery of this one because it had so much flour and I thought maybe it needed more salt. Um, but I also thought that the flour would make for a more, a smoother dough. So I definitely thought it was worth trying. And then I made a fourth dough with two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and one cup of water, but I used hot tap water on that. I didn't boil it, I just used hot out of the tap. Now this is the ginger and, spri and spice clay mold that my friend loaned me. She actually just went and bought this and told me that I could use it because she wasn't going to get time to use it over the weekend. So, um, I definitely wanted to use this one on this salt dough. And after using this one, I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy one. And for those of you who are interested, um, I'm going to include a link where you can buy these. So this is the dough with the two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and one cup of just regular tap water. And uh, so I'm gonna make one of these small gingerbread men out of each of these doughs and, uh, and show you what I think of them. Now, uh, obviously I'm gonna put some cornstarch in these to make sure that my dough doesn't stick. And I love about the IOD molds that they have that lip around the outer edge and it makes it very easy to have a clean edge and not have to clean that up because it just has that raised edge and when you press against that, you'll cut any excess off. So uh, that is definitely a good, uh, a good quality about, these, about the IOD versus the redesign with Prima. So I'm gonna label each of these four uh, so that I'll know which one that I like the best. So again, this one is going to be number one, which is the one with the regular tap water, two cups of flour, and one cup of salt. Now this came out very well from the mold. It made it very clean, uh, and you still get all the detail. I was wondering about that with, with the, the, um, salt dough but you still get plenty of detail so i labeled this one with a one and i labeled my bag one so that i didn't get them mixed up and this one was the one with the boiling water uh, i did note on this one that it came out of the mold super super easy so that was one of the good qualities about this one and again, I made sure to label that uh, so that I didn't forget which one was so easy to remove. And this was the one with the four cups of flour. It wasn't so easy to remove. Uh, so I wanted to keep that in mind, uh, but it still worked out. Uh, of all the doughs, uh, this one turned out to be my least favorite. I still was able to use it, but there were some that during the baking process and the, the recipes call for, um, for 200 degrees, anywhere from two to four hours. 
And what happened with some of this dough is I got um, I got some curling that I, I wasn't really happy with. Now, in some in some instances, it curled it up enough to where it just gave it a little extra personality and character. Uh, but there were there were a few that had to be thrown away. Now I'm using because I'm going to be um, needing a hole in the top of this one. So I just took a little skewer stick and made my holes. And this last one was the hot tap water. And um, it came out of the mold pretty easy. And um, so I noted that uh, not quite as easy as the uh, boiling water, but um, it still worked out really well. So again, I have all these labeled and then I put them in the oven at 200 degrees for about two hours. And they all baked up pretty well. Uh, again, the one with the flour, uh, I had a little bit of misshaping with it and it kind of had a hollow place in the little belly. It, it got a little bulge in the belly, which was fine. Uh, that just added a little character, uh, but there was a little hollowness on the inside, you could tell. Again, I was still able to use it. Now, I'm using the color pine cone that I mixed, um, that I mixed a little bit of the color buttercream in to make it a little bit lighter because the pine cone was definitely the right shade, but uh, needed to be just a little bit lighter. So even though I'm going to be painting the clothes on these, I went ahead and painted uh, the entire thing on the front and the back with this uh, with this pine cone color from Dixie Belle that I had lightened with some buttercream. And I probably used about half and half uh, because obviously the darker color is going to be stronger and um, so you need quite a bit of the light to get it light enough. And then I took some of the color Bunker Hill. Uh, I do have some in the Navy, or Dixie Belle has that color. But I was out, and I did have some Bunker Hill. And I added uh, about half of the Bunker, Bunker Hill and half of the color Caviar, which is just a dull black. And it made just the right color of Navy, because I want these little coveralls or overalls to be... Uh, to look like blue jean material. So I painted them uh, with that base color. And then um, I just dry brushed some, uh, some of the buttercream over the top of that and it brought out, it just kind of stuck to all of the detail and it really ended up looking like um, denim. And here I am dry brushing that over the top. And it's amazing how you see those little blue jean overalls come to life because you don't see that detail in that dark, which you definitely need the dark underneath. Uh, but then once you dry brush that uh, lighter color over the top, it just makes it look like overalls. Or actually, it makes it look like denim overalls. Now, all of these, uh, even though I had my preferences, and I think what I prefer is the two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and one cup of hot tap water. Because uh, I think what the hot water does is uh, melt some of the salt crystals, and it makes the dough a little smoother. So, again, they all worked out fine. All seem to be durable. I just was least impressed with the four cups of flour recipe. And on the brown part of this, uh, I just added a little bit more buttercream to that same color and just kind of dry brushed that over the top to add some dimension in the brown. And that made a really big difference in these. And obviously on the larger ones, uh, there were things like bow ties and a little dress for the girls and uh, more details that could be brought out. Uh, and so I did a little bit more detailed painting on them, but all the painting was very, very easy. 
I just started with my base colors and just uh, kind of added details as I went. But these are just the cutest little things. And again, I'm going to be ordering this mold for sure. So I'm going to be making a few things with these. Uh, with this first one, I took a long piece of jute string, a thinner jute string, and um, put through the hole and now I have it doubled here. And then uh, the loop is, uh, is right there at the top of his head. And then I just keep stringing uh, wooden beads on until I get enough to make a, a little tassel. And then once I get enough beads on and I like the length of it, then, um, then I just tied a knot at the end of that. So the little gingerbread will hang at uh, the bottom of the tassel. And then I just wrapped that same jute uh, several times around my hand. Now you can take a little piece of cardboard, but this is working just fine for me. And uh, I don't know how many times I wrapped it, maybe about uh, 20 or so. Uh, but then um, I cut the bottom uh, after I tied a knot in the top, if that makes sense. So I bring that string through the loop and tie it securely at the top. And then um, I cut all the bottom strands the same length. And then I wrapped a piece of jute around the top and tied it off in the back to make my tassel. And there is what my little tassel ended up looking like. Now you could make a tassel out of the larger one as well. And then I took a couple of the larger molds that I had made and uh, turned them into Christmas tree ornaments. And I did that just by um, adding some little details to the painting. And uh, on that brown sweater, I just dry brushed white over the brown that I had already painted the, the whole ornament in and just kind of brought out all that cabling on the sweater. And then I tied a little piece of lace to the top of the little girl. But um, I put a little jute string in the top and just made these simple little ornaments. And as you can see, I added a little rouge to their cheeks and and uh, painted their little eyes. And I turned one of the little girls into a necklace. Uh, I used some light colored um, leather string and made added to it to make a necklace. And then I took a piece of cardstock and cut a couple of slits in the top of it and just kind of hung that on and then put it in a cellophane bag um, and just put a little piece of cardstock folded down over the top of that with a stamp on it. And that'll make a neat little gift for a little girl. Um, my sister mentioned it would make a really good stocking stuffer. And most likely I'll display the ornament uh, in a cellophane bag like this as well. Obviously it won't be hanging on anything, but uh, it will be in a little bag here with that folded top. But these could be used in a lot of different ways. They could be a bowl filler, the larger ones or the smaller ones. Uh, you could um, use some of the smaller ones and make a key ring. Uh, there's just a number of things that you can use these little things for. And I just think they're super, super cute. They would be really cute in a tiered tray as well. Again, if you're interested in ordering this mold, I'm going to add the link where I'm going to order mine uh, in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.